Hi, hi. Welcome once again to part two of Pandemic. This is Robert Mwando and you're watching Edify. In part one of this episode, I spoke to you generally about pornography and I gave you some mind-boggling statistics, uh, how it affects many people. Today, I'm going to focus in more on the effects of pornography uh, uh, that you could be actually experiencing. If you watch part one of the pandemic, you would agree with me that pornography hurts adults, children, couples, families, and society in unimaginable ways. Many people still hold the myths that pornography is a male and youth only problem, that it's for those who don't go to church or those who are single. But statistics prove otherwise. One out of three porn viewers are actually female. 33% of women aged 25 and under search porn at least once a month. And 94% of children will see porn by the age of 14. 47% of families in the US reported a porn problem and 59 of pastors say that married men seek their help for porn use. Again, 56% of American divorces are associated to the porn problem. And 55% of married men and 25% of married women say they watch porn at least once a month. I spoke about all these statistics and it proves to us that actually it's not for youth alone or um, unmarried men alone. It is a problem affecting both Christian and non-Christians alike. As much as these statistics are mind-boggling, I believe these are conservative figures. I say conservative because as a minister working among youth, two out of three young people I have interacted closely with admit to having had exposure to pornography. I have had Christian marrieds ask this question. Is it wrong to watch porn with your spouse? I hope my presentation addresses this question as well. For those of us who grew up in the era before the advent of smart devices, our exposure was limited to sex tapes. We used to call them blue movies, romance novels, and tabloids. I remember in high school there would be late night movies reserved for the seniors. I can't tell you how much effect those movies had on us. Imagine a boys only school with sexually excited teenagers and young people. This is how most were introduced to the vices of masturbation and homosexuality. Today, everything is sexualized with easy filming making apps like Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram and others Porn has been made affordable, accessible, and anonymous. Saturn, the Prince of Darkness, and therefore wants to keep you bound in the dark in the name of keeping your secret seen, uh, has made sure that porn is a secret thing that many people are struggling with. Newer forms of sex like phone sex, sexting, video cam sex and explicit advertising with constant pop-ups provide involuntary exposure to pornography and increase chances for children especially getting exposed at an early age. Here below are some known effects of exposure and addiction to pornography. Number one. Pornography objectifies women. It lowers the value of women. You know that images of women are used widely in advertising. They are told to dress sexy and act sensual in video promos. Can't women just be themselves? Number two, people exposed to porn are overstimulated. This negatively affects the brain and it eventually becomes desensitized. A desensitized brain becomes dependent on enhancing factors. And once these factors are withdrawn, a person is unable to function normally. Number three, 
Pornography is a time waster. Porn addicts could spend up to 12 hours a week watching porn, which leads to underperformance on the job and subsequently could lead to loss of employment. Number four, it lowers your self-esteem. Porn addicts are under pressure to perform and could eventually take to enhancement drugs to prove their prowess. Pressure to perform kills passion. So basically, porn makes you a poor lover. If you thought that by watching porn, you become a better lover, it actually affects how you love. Number five. On the other hand, it also lowers your spouse's self-esteem. Imagine a spouse who is struggling to meet your extra need and they find themselves falling short. Their esteem will be lowered. Number six, among adolescents, pornography hinders the development of a healthy sexuality. I think I mentioned that in the previous episode. And among adults, it distorts sexual attitudes and social realities. Now, Satan uses porn to create this lie that all men are large, and if you are not, you are less than a man. That a real man should go on and on non-stop. Yet those porn films are shot over a long period of time. Some have to take drugs to prolong an erection, just to prove a point. Number seven. In families, pornography leads to marital dissatisfaction infidelity, separation, and divorce. Research has shown that pornography is also associated with sexual performance anxiety among married couples, erectile dysfunction among male porn addicts, simply because it demands too much for them to perform. It also leads to depression, sex addiction, social anxiety, and substance use uh, disorders. Most people who have a porn addiction say that it hurts their personal relationships. But most critically, for Christians with a porn addiction, it leads to unpleasant feelings of self-hatred, feelings of shame, and loss of spiritual relationships. It could be the reason you can't pray, the reason you can't read your Bible, the reason you find the company of other Christians or being in church becoming uncomfortable for you. You can't sing in the choir or you share you can't share your faith with boldness because you feel condemned. The Bible sets very high standards in regard to pornography. Matthew chapter 5 verse 28 says, "But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart." Once a person gets addicted to pornography, their minds will always imagine what lies beneath. They will undress every woman or man of their fantasy. That's adultery according to God's standards. How do you break free from a porn addiction? First, you've got to bust the enemy's lies that you cannot change. The enemy wants you to believe that you can't change that you are a prison at your past and that God is angry with you and doesn't accept or love you any longer. That is a lie from the pits of hell. Know these three truths from God. Know that he wants you to change, that there is freedom for you in Christ and believe God loves and accepts you. Here are some scriptural references for you that you can refer to and read. Romans chapter 8 verse 1, Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, and Psalm 103 verse 10 to 12. Read it for yourself. Another way to break free is believe that God can set you free. You've got to believe that it is possible for you to be free. Luke chapter 8 verse 18 27 says, What is impossible with man is possible with God. You can also look up Psalm 25 verse 15. 
Number four, be open about your struggles. Admit that you have a problem. Confess your sin before God. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 says, Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Number five, hate sin and the consequences more than you love the momentary pleasures. When the pain of sin becomes greater than the pleasures of your sin, you will stop your sin. Number six, fear God. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 27 says, The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. Pornography indeed can be a snare of death, but God would like to give you a life of abundance. Number eight, have someone to hold you accountable. I know that you've heard about this over and over again, but it's important for you to be able to have somebody who you report to, somebody who asks the tough questions uh, about your life. You can also refer to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1. And then be willing to take radical action. There is this scripture in Matthew chapter 5, verse 29 to 30, which talks about if your eye causes you to sin, gorge it out and actually throw it away. That is what it means to take radical action. You've got to be willing to take that step to change. The next thing that you need to do to get free from any addiction is to accept God's free gift of grace. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. If you read it, you realize that it's by the atoning blood of Jesus Christ that we are set free. The next step is to get to the root cause of the issue. Many times we deal with the symptoms and we don't get to the root cause of the problem. Do you normally get into porn as an easy way out? Is it an unresolved marital problem? Deal with the root causes or the triggers. Now, deliverance doesn't mean absence of desire or absence of temptation or perfection, but it means progress. When we are able to make progress from what we used to do and we are able to go free for one day or two days, we need to celebrate those gains. Deliverance means sin no longer has dominion or mastery over you. I do hope that this episode will help set you on a path to deliverance for any addiction, especially the addiction of pornography. Should you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments section or you could as well contact me via WhatsApp on the number on your screen. God bless you.